Welcome back to Booze and Rocks, where we make cocktails for everyone. My name is David Edwards, and would you like a bloody nose? No, <laughs> I'm pretty sure you wouldn't because I don't want one. However, I will make us a blood orange sour. Let's get into it. It's great to have every single one of you back here today. We are making a blood orange gin sour. Interestingly enough, the blood orange is an orange with reddish pigment or fruit inside. Now, what that actually means is that, I'm gonna get all nerdy and geeky here for about 10 seconds, is that it is part of the anthrocyanus family of polyphenol pigments. Say that 10 times fast because I know I won't. Uh, <clears throat> however, it does give us a unique look and taste to one of these awesome little oranges. So, there's not really a lot of history in this. Sours have been around for a long, long time. You can make them without eggs, with eggs. You could use aquafaba, you could use foaming bitters. Now I'm going to do it with egg white because I like that foamy head. So let's get into it. The first thing you need to do is grab your shaking glass. And we want to reach for your gin of choice. In this case, I'm using Dylan's gin number seven. Now this is a softer gin. So the flavors of the juniper and the pine aren't sharp and hard. And what that'll do is that'll actually blend much smoother in with the citrus notes. And we need two ounces or 60 milliliters. Ooh, look at that. The next thing you wanna do is grab your blood orange of choice. Slap that down. What we're gonna do is give this a bit of a cut. We're going to leave a nice little slice here for our garnish. And it's got a gorgeous looking color in there. We're gonna squeeze one ounce. Now one ounce does work out to 30 milliliters. <laughs> Look at that color, that's awesome. Put this off to the side because we're gonna need this again like three seconds down the road. Move that over again, grab your lemon. And we're going to use, eh, no, nowhere near the same amount because we already have a lot of citrus flute, citrus fruit in here, not flute, because David has problems. And we need a quarter of an ounce or seven and a half mils. Look at that. Oh, can't go wrong apparently. I'm gonna leave that one in there for you, just so you have something to laugh at. Okay, I'm gonna wipe my hands, wipe my area. I'm having problems. So, next you're gonna grab your simple syrup. This is a one-to-one -one simple syrup. We need one part water, one part sugar. Bring it up to just shy of a boil, let it incorporate till it goes clear, and then put it in the fridge and use to your heart's content. We need three quarters of an ounce or 22 and a half milliliters. Nice, nice, absolutely gorgeous. Move that off to the side. Grab an egg, because we need one egg white. And if you wait till the end of the video, I'm gonna shoot this egg yolk just for you because you know you want me to. Put that there. Put that. Never mind. We'll drink it like a, a civilized individual. So what we're gonna do now is we're going to do a dry shake. So we're gonna shake this without ice for a good 10 to 15 seconds really hard. Now that we've done that, we're going to add some ice. And we need two chunks of ice, about one inch cubes. Slap your lid back on there. Now what's gonna happen is it's going to start to cool off. And do you hear that? So what's that's happening now is it's reacting to the citric acid and the cold. And for this, just in case you don't have a good enough seal, use a rag and then shake hard, really hard. All right, looking good, looking good. Pop that open. We're gonna have a beautiful, gorgeous head on here. Grab a rocks glass. Actually grab whatever glass you want. You don't need ice, you can use ice. Totally up to you. And we're going to fine strain this. One of the things I find by fine straining is not only do we keep out pulp and little ice chips, we do, however, get a tighter 
Fon. Look at that. Oh, all foam. So while that's doing that, what we're going to do is we're going to get a little bit of Angostura bitters. And what we'll do is we will place four drops on top. And we're doing this for not only the aroma, but just for decorative purposes as well. And it will add some complexity to the cocktail. Oh, I'm out of shape with all that shaking. So grab your piece of blood orange, give it a small cut, slide that on like so. And look what we have, a beautiful blood orange gin sour. Let's give it a smell. So immediately we get two sets of odors. We get the Angostura bitters. We also get the smell directly from the blood orange. Oh, so good. Mm. The orange comes through really, really well. The lemon is just there to curb it, along with the sweetness from the simple syrup. And the gin being a much smoother and rounder gin than some, oh, it does wonders. Mm. That is excellent. Oh. If you think I should use a different type of gin with more juniper notes, less juniper notes, something of a dry style or an old Tom gin, please leave a comment down below. If this is your first time to my channel, please hit the subscribe button and make sure you hit that bell notification. That way, every time we put up a new video, you will be notified. And if you'd like to help support the channel, please check us out at patreon.com forward slash booze under rocks because every little bit helps us to bring these videos to you. You have an awesome day. And now for those of you <clears throat> that really want to see me suffer, I'm not even going to grab it random. I'm going to grab the bottle of 151 and the egg yolk. <sighs> Why do I do this to myself? Bottoms up. You're welcome. <laughs>